What makes a building a work of architecture? What makes a park a work of landscape architecture? What makes a photograph a work of art? The role of the design arts has been changing fairly radically in recent times. The boundary between what is a space of learning and what isn't a space of learning has changed. Architecture is as much a way of finding the world as it is a way of forming it. There's an architecture of infrastructure and an architecture of everyday life. Engaging this new, ultimately cosmopolitan reality is what the Daniels faculty excels at. I work with cities and I, I look at cities at a large scale, from the regional scale to the neighborhood down to the building. What's the city that we've now inherited at a regional scale and how do we, uh, how do we take that and work with it for the future? How do we change the structure of, of neighborhoods and the systems around neighborhoods to create sustainable and livable places? Most of my work is around cities and how we govern them globally. In 1900, only 10% of the planet was urbanized. Today we're at around 53%, moving to 75%. We're trying to build a platform form of metrics that we can start to have cities actually conversing. We can't actually have Chicago talking to Toronto or Toronto to Dubai. The model that we've adopted doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. You could describe what I do as lying at the intersection between the built and designed uh, environment and contemporary culture. I often work with found objects, air purifiers, humidifiers, heaters, fans, which I put into new contexts. What I'm trying to do is to ask questions about the way we live and the artifacts that we surround ourselves with. Out of Water has been a project that both Aziza and I have been working on. Liad and I started uh, looking at the role of water in buildings, landscape, and cities. It began with a serious concern for conditions in arid climates and also areas that are devoid of uh, water and sanitation infrastructure. Both our backgrounds made it possible for us to think beyond the boundaries between architecture and landscape architecture and urban design and, and engineering and all type of other discipline. Well, we started collaborating in 1983 and we really worked on single channel video projects then. As we started out almost strictly in video, well, yeah. film. Film, yeah. photography, then video, public project, sculptural, audio. We're working on a, uh, a, a, a robot. We call it a death bot. Students certainly learn unique skills by working directly with an artist. Architecture has enormous potential in impacting the way that our cities evolve. We think about architecture, landscape architecture, urbanism as a kind of unified idea about how to make better cities, better places for people to live, and how to make a difference in everyone's lives. I see students with an incredible amount of talent. I really encourage a broad-based experience for my students, which includes lots of travel, lots of reading, seeing good movies, seeing bad movies, not distinguishing between the avant-garde and, and Hollywood. Architecture is everything. It's not just buildings. It's, you know, what we sit on, what we look at, the experience when you go to a museum. I find that architecture today is really every facet of our life. Design education really emerged at a moment when there were ideas in the air about um, making sensations and emotions the foundations of the discipline. I completed with a group of students a project for a garden in Xi'an in China. You walk around and the sense, there are sensors which are triggered and then deliver to you in a very precise way uh, another layer, artificial sense. We can design architecture with uh, light, with smell. Sensation has become a design field. Every building implies a city. Every building has a vision in it. And in that act of making something that is introduced into the world, you influence the world of the future. It's no secret that we're getting taller and taller with the buildings that we design. But the way that we're designing them is not necessarily uh, changing. My thesis is a prototype for a tower of unlimited height. With the way I've designed the tower, the apertures both allow light into the space as well as allow shadows to not be cast onto other buildings within the city as the verticality expands endlessly into the sky. I have a background in architecture, fine art history, and visual studies. I became interested in landscape, offering a new set of materials. How rock itself was a wall. This map shows the Toronto Ravine Network. 
This map shows the watershed of my site near Castle Frank Station. The arrows indicate paths of erosion. And here I'm exploring how the retaining walls would actually engage the landscape. I really like to come up with a concept, draw it out, and then almost instantly be able to fabricate it and see it in physical format. This is my thesis project called High Street, Low Street. My intervention is a series of bridges that sort of go along Bay Street and um, connect the buildings. So by creating elevated walkways and bridges, I've created new opportunities for businesses to create storefronts. It is possible to imagine a place within a city that generates more than it needs. My project for High Park is called Transplants. By creating modular floating wetlands, plants are grown within the context of High Park and then a connection to the Ontario waterfront is established by transporting that material. I wanted to find a way of bringing both science and design together. Design isn't something that comes in after the program and everything else has been set. Design is a way to think through a problem. The One Spadina project represents a tremendous opportunity for us. To create this community in a place where people will want to spend time. That's what I think is something that needs to be recognized and supported. And an architecture school embedded in the middle of the largest city in the entire country is essential to question what we're doing, why we're doing it. The One Spadina site has actually had many different lives. We have moved forward from renovating our existing building and creating a whole new environment. Our thinking about a new building for the faculty began with a transformative gift from John and Mariner Daniels. With the commingling of the virtual and the real, we realize we need a new kind of platform, a space for design-driven research, innovation, and creative collaboration. The One Spadina Project was conceived with this challenge in mind. My effort over the last years has been to establish what is the relationship between design, pedagogy, and the spaces of, uh, of teaching. We didn't just receive a program, we transformed it. We've refused in many ways to design just a building. It really is a piece of urbanism in, in and of itself. We don't think of the building as a series of floors or terraces. They are commingled and interpenetrated. The additions onto the building as part of the landscape are a kind of mediation between urban design, landscape design and architecture. More towards the public edges of the site, we're organizing a series of, of pavilions that, that house research initiatives. In a sense, creating a whole architecture, city building and arts district at the University of Toronto. The architectural layout, the spatial layouts, speak to the larger idea about sustainability the roofscape, in channeling water and saving all of that water through the way in which we uh, draw all of that into a cistern in the south. We're making the building in, in the best way we know how now, but more importantly thinking about it as a kind of resilient piece of infrastructure whose function can evolve over time. Young people go to where they think the best teachers are. The Daniels has the best teachers, there's no question in my mind about that. Design schools become experimental places to think these kinds of questions about knowledge in the university. What architecture student wouldn't want to take performance art from us? <laughs> there's such a great history in the faculty of just understanding Toronto and being the stewards of Toronto. It's not just the faculty and the students, it's the students engaging with each other. There's this really strong studio culture at Daniels. Being able to wander around and see what other students are doing really pushes you and inspires you as an academic. This project is exemplary of adopting strategies that build as bridges between all these disciplines. When you have uh, a lot of thinkers thinking uh, together, collectively across the disciplines, you can make a real sea change. I actually believe buildings can make a big difference and one building can make a big difference. Design can become an agent to transforming building culture, urban culture, and the things that happen in the city today. Cities can actually come together and we can convene a conversation at once Spadina that, um, you know, it's unparalleled. It's uh, central to the way in which the university, the city, the province and the country think about a sustainable future.